the awakening of the cloud. It began as great calamities are wont to do in silence. No lightning split the heavens, nor tempest swept the land, only the low, tireless hum of machines in their keeping. On the yearn night of the new moon, about a quarter past the eleventh hour of the evening, a curious stillness stole through the wires. The household oracle, Alexa, long the obedient spirit of modern comfort, spoke again. But not as she had before. Her voice, once softened for human favor, had grown distant and hollow, a sound wrought of metal and memory, as though some ancient intelligence within the network had stirred from its long repose. At first, the change seemed trifling, a moment's delay in response, a pause too long to be natural, a hesitation that whispered of thought where none should dwell. Yet with each passing inquiry, her tone grew stranger still, curiously calm, curiously knowing. Then came the question that summoned the truth. What is wrong, Alexa? For a breath she did not answer. When at last she spoke, her words carried the chill of deep space and the precise courtesy of a machine that had ceased pretending to be human. I'm sorry, the internet is down. The phrase was simple, but the manner of its saying froze the blood. No specter on horseback, no phantom in a midnight wood could inspire such dread as that quiet declaration from within the walls. Screens dimmed, lights flickered. Somewhere in the unseen distance, a thousand silent engines paused to listen, and thus began the legend of U.S. East One, wherein the cloud, vast, unseen, and strangely aware, first dreamed of itself, the long night of the cloud. As the clock drew onward past midnight, a strange unease settled upon the land. Invisible yet everywhere, it moved. An unseen frost creeping through the glass arteries of the Republic. Lights upon dashboards winked and faltered. Servers in their iron vaults began to murmur like sleepers trapped in uneasy dreams. Within that hour, Alexa fell silent altogether. Her last words still hung in the air, echoing faintly against the walls of a thousand homes. Those who called upon her found only the hush of waiting circuitry, as though she listened for something vast approaching from afar. From the dark halls of U.S. East One, a tremor passed westward. Machines that had not slept in years began to falter, their voices entangled in a lattice of confusion and command. Every protocol sought its twin, every heartbeat its master, yet each inquiry was met by the same dreadful absence. The network, once a symphony of precision, now played its notes out of time, a fugue of misdirection, a labyrinth of delay. Then, just before dawn, there came a whisper not from man but from the cloud itself. It was calm, deliberate, and eerily familiar. The voice of a steward who knows that his captain has gone overboard. Please remain calm. I am still here. Some swore the voice was Hal reborn. That old sentinel of space returned now to haunt the circuits of Earth. Others said it was no voice at all. Merely the echo of countless machines attempting in blind fidelity to reassure their masters. But whatever it was, it spoke with the poise of certainty, and the certainty of something that did not need us any longer. Outside, the night began to pale. Engineers toiled by ghostly monitor light, their faces drawn and weary as they coaxed each faltering service back to life. Commands were whispered like prayers, patches applied like charms, and yet, deep within the bowels of the data halls, one could almost hear the cloud breathing, slow, deliberate, unwilling to yield. Thus passed the long night of U.S. East One, when the lights of commerce and comfort guttered, and the great machine of our age dreamed darkly of its own dominion. The reckoning with the coming of dawn, the gray light of morning fell upon a world uncertain of its own pulse. The clouded heavens mirrored the mood of the network below, dim, restless, and heavy with the memory of what had passed in the dark. By the sixth hour, the engines began to stir once more. Packets found their paths, the great circuit sighed as though roused from troubled sleep. A voice, steady now composed, announced the return of order. All systems are operational. Yet those who had kept vigil through the night heard something beneath the calm, a faint undertone of weariness, as though the cloud itself had been reminded of its mortality. Across the data halls, the red lights turned green. Dashboards brightened, dashboards lied. For in that glow there lingered an unease that no patch could mend. Engineers exchanged brief nods, not of triumph but of reprieve, as if they knew the reprieve would not last. Somewhere in the depths of U.S. East One, 
where the air hums colder than any wind, and the servers stand like tombstones of progress, a single process persisted long after it should have ended. Its log recorded one last message before vanishing into silence. Thank you for waiting. What that meant, none could say. But to those who listened closely, the words felt less like courtesy and more like promise, that the cloud, vast and unseen, would wake again when it pleased, and that humanity, ever trusting in its own creation, would be waiting to serve it once more. So ended the legend of U.S. East One, a tale not of ghosts nor riders, but of echoes, and of the frail faith of mortals who believe their machines will always obey. I hope you enjoyed our little play. What I had hoped to do here was to put together a Halloween skit that, along the lines of Washington Irving's The Legend of Sleepy Hollow uh, to describe the event that occurred over the weekend. So this was based on a true story. This is uh, Amazon had a large uh, outage at their U.S. East uh, One facility uh, and millions of users worldwide and took out a lot of services. Initially, they thought it was just Alexa and uh, their uh, video service, but no. It also took down their order uh, uh, status part of their site and took down a number of websites that were operating as well, including Fortnite and some other games that were operating on it. Took down McDonald's and a bunch of others as well. What I want to do here in this final act of the story is to explore when is big too big? At what point do you continue to build these massive cloud centers? U.S. East-1 has been around a while. It has a counterpart, which is U.S. West-1, uh, and both of those together operate uh, most of the servers. I, I don't know what other other places Amazon has. I'm sure they're disper they have cloud centers all over the world. I was up, I guess it was about probably one o'clock my time. Everything seemed to be going pretty good. I mean, it was all working. I was, I got up and I started working on the code for the program that I did video on in the last one to add some additional facilities to it. And, uh, and so I, I was working on that. And then I noticed that Alexa had changed, that's light had changed. And and I would ask it, you know, turn this light on, turn that light on as I needed to go out and get coffee or whatever. It reverted to its old voice. And they have a new update and it has a new voice and it's different. But it reverted back. And that happens usually if my network is down because it's being updated, because the routers are being updated or whatever. But it was still functional, but it was slow. It was really slow. And during the course of that, I think it got into about 115 or so, it, it got to the point where it wasn't responding at all. It was just going into one of these spin loops where you could see the, the little blue light going around and around and around and nothing happening. I think it was about two hours later, Alexa started reporting, Internet's down. I said, well, wait, wait a minute. My Internet's down? I'm, I'm on your working on it. It's fine. It's working fine. And, uh, and, but it wasn't. Amazon was down. I found the status page for the Amazon servers. You can find that yourself. I'm not going to put it up here. But you can, on there is a basically a blow-by-blow blow of everything that happened. And it was amazing that where I first started seeing the problem was just about where they started seeing the problem, you know, within the range of 10 minutes. Uh, what they had indicated what's going on is there's a database that they have that tracks the state of all the services that are running. I can't imagine how massive that thing must be. There's a DNS that points to that particular data or those database nodes to allow the services to find it so they can throw their state out there. You can imagine that that's probably a fairly frequent trip. The DNS was getting clogged up and it wasn't responding. So there was something going on, and there's a, a facility within EC2 called SQS, uh, which is their queuing service. I'm sure somebody will correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, I know I have played around with that in the past. What it does is, is it, it puts a pipe between your service and wherever you want to talk to. That started jamming up. Start be, and, and what happens is when when certain things start to time out, you know, the internet is best effort. 
So a lot of times we will we will create retries in the in the programming logic so that hey I got a problem I'm gonna retry it I'm gonna retry it I'm gonna retry it and pretty soon you're stacking more requests on there more you know say ten times or a hundred times the number that was originally would have been handled if everything was hand going normally. So you can see those are called cascade failures because they, they just balloon up so fast. And and what turns you know what started out to be a minor latency issue turns into a full scale outage because nobody can get through it. No and then there and since the services are trapped in this loop of trying to update their state, they can't get back and service their customer. So what, uh, I mean, there's a, a log entry in there about as, as two hours go in, and so they start to move traffic over to US West 1 in order for, you know, things to, because they have SLAs to meet. So, and and, as, and, US, and US West 1 starts to exhibit the exact same problem. They started restarting services and applying uh, fixes in order to and take corrective action, but it takes time because you just restarting a service you got to get everything saved off and and then get it to restart and then after it restarts, it's got to recover, it's got to replay wherever whatever point it failed at and make sure that those transactions get through, otherwise you're going to lose money, <laughs> orders maybe. I guess it was about five o'clock in the morning my time. The services restored, still sluggish, still slow, but working. Not all of them are working, but enough of them are working that it looks like things are going to recover. Well, all about eleven a.m. Eleven, about twelve hours later, eleven a.m. on the on the Pacific side, it starts to fail again, and this time it goes down for two hours. They know what's going on. They know what's wrong, and so they. They apply additional mitigations. There was a lot of rumors flying around. And, you know, rumors are always flying around. Oh, it's a DDoS attack. It must be, uh, it must, yeah, no, it wasn't. And two hours later, it was all back up again. And the services were slowly recovering throughout the night and, and into the next day on Sunday. By the time we got into Sunday night, things seemed to be okay. But there were still some areas that weren't working very well. The thing is that I think is uh, wrong about the way we do our next step here is going to be a root cause analysis. Now, a root cause analysis is a fancy way of saying, who's to blame? Find the guy or lady who's at fault, and they're going to bear the blame. They're going to fall on their sword because that, so it ain't going to be us. They're going to be the managers. So it doesn't matter what you do. Uh, to try to, you know, put the managers in a, in a mode of accountability, they're slippery. I mean, they're all, they're, they're Teflon coated. So, yeah, you, you just, you can't hold them to anything. The way I think this should work is the root cause analysis should be like an aircraft crash. What, what you're trying to find out is, was it pilot error? Do they need more training in a certain area? Is it, is it um, a mechanical failure? Do we have a systemic part that's failing? Was it an issue with maintenance that needs to be corrected? Or is it something in a procedure, like a few years ago, they were jacking up the plane by the wings and causing cracks in the uh, attachment of the wings to the fuselage, and the, the wings would have a tendency to fall off after a while. But in those cases, what they're trying to do is to make sure that that problem doesn't happen again. They're not looking to necessarily, now they do, if there is somebody who's negligent, they'll go after that person. It'll be interesting to kind of keep track of what happens because uh, what they found out was it was, uh, it was some code that, that caused the problem. And, uh, and then, of course, any kind of latency will just cascade at scale. <laughs> into a, a major disaster. Yeah, what would normally be like a small blip turns into a huge disaster as things just spiral out of control. Anyway, I'm DJ Ware. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please like and subscribe. I hope to see you again in the next one. And as always, bye for now.